What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out wrestlers no selling weapons. We're gonna check out some of these no selling moments from wrestlers. Should be an interesting one. Uh, this is by Tap Out Corner. If you haven't already, go subscribe to him. And uh, let's get right into this one. Goldberg was in the midst of his undefeated streak. On June 1st, the future WWE Hall of Famer's opponent was La Parca. The masked luchador came armed with a chair, but that was like bringing a knife to a gunfight. Yeah. It's like, hit me with it, go ahead. Oh, oh my god. And then there can be certain situations where someone is so OP and so overpowered character-wise that you hit them in the head with a steel chair like Goldberg back in his WCW days. And if anything, it enhances it because now it makes this person even more monsters. Like, yo, he got hit with a steel chair and he didn't sell it to the dome piece. Oh, this guy is screwed. So it, it can work. But it, just, it that depends on the situation and the character. You know what I'm saying? So it depends on the wrestler. But like this, all it did was hype the crowd up and he's about to get speared for his troubles. Who doesn't Boom. Make Sting was 62 when he had his first match on AEW Dynamite. The icon teamed up with Darby Allin to take on the group called 2.0. Despite his age, Sting turned out to be the toughest guy in the match. Sting! Oh! Powerbomb through the table by 2.0! Wow. A year later, Sting found himself <laughs> brawling in the crowd. His opponent got the upper hand and smacked the Stinger with a chair, but it had the complete opposite effect. Oh, oh my god. Right before he joined WWE, Leo Rush had one of his final matches as an independent wrestler against Joey Janela. The two were fighting on a ladder Jesus when Janela grabbed Leo oh. and gave him a nasty looking powerbomb through a table, Jesus only for Rush Christ. to get back up and act like his neck hadn't just been smashed onto the mat. Oh, there still looks like pieces of table on like the back of his neck. Now, if I get hit with a move like that, like that's different, bro. That's that you should be selling that. You definitely should be something I get it. This is like the power up, charged up moment. But you could do that like on another spot. Like he gets hit in the back with the with, with, with the, the chair, but he, he no sells it. You know, he's powering up. He's charging up. You get hit with that move. And that's one of them like old school type tables. And you have the piece of debris still in the back of your head. I would think you should sell that a little bit. <laughs> Big Daddy V was one of the biggest men to ever compete in WWE. He could also take a beating as seen during the Extreme Rules sense. match against Tommy Dreamer. During the fight, Dreamer drove a trash can into Big Daddy's head, not Look once, but twice, and it literally had no effect. Roman Reigns learned the hard way that Braun Strowman mm -hmm. took the steel chair back scene a long time ago. Bro, How that was a cool moment when he, uh, and the crowd went crazy. That was a cool little moment. But once again, it makes sense in the context of he got hit in his arm. He's a he's a big guy, got muscles. That's not going to affect him. It would be different if Leo Rush got hit like that. He should sell that. However, Drew Gulak did not know that, and the result was pretty humorous. Really? Easy, bro. <laughs> the story of Kane in WWE was that he was burned in a fire as a kid and survived. With that in mind, the headbangers should have known a boombox would have no effect on him. Yeah. The the Ming or Haku that was, is legit one of the toughest guys. That was, uh, you know, seeing that as a kid, someone get hit with that a boombox and it breaks in a billion pieces only for him to look at you again. Terrifying nightmare fuel. Guys in wrestling history, it shouldn't be surprising then that when Dusty Rhodes swung a chair at him, this is what happened. Oh my god, bro. Oh my god. Now you're either gonna think this next one is awesome or ridiculous. At TNA Impact Wrestling's biggest event of the year, Bound for Glory, Jeez. Brian Cage took on Sammy Callahan. The two had a very physical match Jesus. with a lot of weapons being used. Towards the end, though, arguably the most dangerous weapon of them all was brought out. Thumbtacks. Uh, Sammy then pile drive Cage onto the tax, went for the cover, and Brian Cage kicked out instantly. Now, despite that, there are some wrestling weapons that are even more dangerous. To find out what they are, watch the video. Yeah. I'm gonna be honest with you. Even though the guy that did the move, he took more of the damage from the thumbtacks. I get that. But from a, like, the instant kick out, it would be like, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just to me it's a, it's a fine line of like 
setting things up where it makes sense. So, you know, if someone gets get hit with a finishing move on some thumbtacks, they should not be, you know, moving from that. Hell, if you get hit with anything on some th thumbtacks, it should probably be GG's for the most part if you're going for the pin, you know. But in certain situations, depending on the wrestler and, and the character that they're trying to build within the story of the match, like this guy is an unstoppable force, not even weapons is taking him down. It can, it can work, but me personally, if you're jumping off a ladder and you, you know... <laughs> you know falling through a ladder you know falling off a ladder through a high ladder through a, a through a table or a couple chairs or whatever you probably shouldn't be getting up from that but comment down below let me know how do you guys feel about wrestlers no selling weapons and uh you know going through objects and stuff are you guys for it are you guys against it are you guys like in the middle like it depends on the wrestler and the story they're trying to tell let me know how you guys feel about it but i appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel road to 150k and i'm still going to be the youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking me see you on the next one peace